Hey guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UFI for this extension, Florida Sea Grant agent in Collier County. And today I'm going to go over the infamous lionfish. So look at those venomous spines. Yep, oh, well, they're still tasty and they're not poisonous. They're great to eat. We're going to give you some uh, life history characteristics, some tips on flying them, and even how to prepare one whole. So if you watch this video and take the survey, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to move the camera closer so you can get a better look at my hands and let's get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. So to give you an idea for scale, um, this individual here was about 13 inches total length and 1.3 pounds. So uh, I'm not sure if IGFA has an actual world record for these fish, but Florida FWC does a great job of uh, recording the different lengths and uh, weights of these fish. So they have uh, hook and line records, spearing records, golf records, Atlantic records, weights, uh, uh, lengths, all sorts of stuff. So the, the longest lionfish out there was 18.78 inches and that was in Isla Mirada. And the heaviest lionfish out there that was uh, caught uh, via spear is 3.38 pounds and that was shot in Pensacola. So spearing is a very common way of targeting this species and it's encouraged if you see them out there. Um, they're occasionally caught on hook and line, but really diving is the way that you could target these. So um, there are two species of lionfish in the Atlantic and the Gulf. Uh, there's the red lionfish, which is the Pteroas volitans. So Pteroas starts with a P and it's silent like pterodactyl. But Pteroas volitans, and those are from the Pacific. Uh, and then there's also Pteroas miles, which is also known as the devil firefish. The volatans is the red lionfish. And the devil firefish, they're very similar looking to the volatans. It's hard to tell them apart, um, but those are more from the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea. And uh, there's reports of those actually being introduced in the Mediterranean due to the Suez Canal out there. Um, however, most of the lionfish that we see here are the volatans, so that's the red lionfish. And there's a way that you could differentiate them through their dorsal uh, fin rays and their anal fin rays. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, they're, they're very similar. They have this sort of zebra characteristic pattern. And there's a lot of different phenotypic plasticity in terms of how they look. So these are both the same species, but this one's lighter, this one's darker. Um, that's just how they are. They have these neat bony plates around the face. They're super pretty. It's unfortunate that these are invasive and causing damage to our environment. Um, but you can see why uh, there would be a popular uh, aquarium fish, and that's where they believe that much of the, the introductions came from. So the lionfish actually has 18 venomous spines. So you can see them here. Um, but not all the fins have uh, venom associated with them. So the caudal fin... You're good. The pectoral fin. You're good. But there are 13 dorsal spines that are venomous. And you can see they have this like sheath around them. And if you pull back the sheath, there's this like hypodermic. Actually, it's not hypodermic. It's, uh, it's not hollow at all. There's a groove on the inside that has glandular tissue that is responsible for that venom. Uh, they're not hollow like like snake fangs. They, they just have the, this little groove that you could put your fingernail actually in between. But you can see how sharp that is. I'll, I'll try to get some better pictures for you and put that. But each one of those, you could pull that back and see the, the those, uh, those venomous spines there. So there's 13 across the top. There are... Um, two on the pelvic fins. So the pelvic fins are these fins right here. And they would be right right in the front, right there. And then uh, there are three on the anal fin. So one, two, three. And that is the fin right here in the back. So there, there are also fin rays, which are the ones in the back. Um, but the spines are the more rigid structures out there. So 18 total. Um, you really have to worry about the dorsal the pelvic and then the anal but the the caudal and the pectoral you're good to go um, and 
Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started filleting this fish. We're going to do this one fillet, and I'm going to show you how to prepare this one whole. It's a really popular way um, to do that, just to get the most meat out of it. And they actually are pretty cool in terms of uh, having that on a plate for a display. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing here. I'm going to get our fillet knife and start at it. So their their face is really bony. You might think that they can sting you with that, but it's just these bony plates out there. Um, and, and, and it's used, you know, probably for protection because they're, they're putting their face into crevices trying to reach those little fish and invertebrates. And they, they actually use these pectoral fins to uh, corral them, corral them into different locations so they can spread these up and use them as like a barrier. And they actually have pretty interesting behavior. So let's go ahead and make this incision this way. You can choose to trim them up or you can just uh, fillet them with the spines on. Um, they still can be venomous after being on ice, but it's uh, if you're not going to get sort of poked by a normal fish, you won't get poked by this. It's just the stakes are a lot higher in terms of feeling that venomous uh, sting. And I've actually gotten hit a couple times with it and it doesn't feel good. It's sort of like a dull, throbbing pain for a while after the initial um, sort of shock of getting stabbed with them wears off. So I'm just lifting that fillet, and these are delicious. I, I can't really tell you um, too many fish in the Gulf that beats lionfish in terms of a seafood fillet product. Um, they're super white. I always associate white meat with uh, being, you know, not fishy at all and really tasty. So it's a great morsel, good nugget right over there. You can see how beautiful that fillet is. So we'll put that off to the side, start on the other side. So the first observed, uh, a lot of people will think that lionfish were introduced after Hurricane Andrew since there was so much destruction to South Florida and that there could have been introductions through uh, aquariums or people, people releasing their pets. Um, however, the first observed lionfish were found in 1985 off a of Dania beach area. And since then, they've had uh, explosive growth. They're anywhere from... Uh, uh, North Carolina. They've been sp spotted farther north than that. I'm not sure in terms of if they could withstand the winters up there, but the currents bring these fish around um, and uh, all the way down to South America and really throughout the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. They've been pretty, pretty predominant. That's our other fillet right there. Put that there. Here's our pretty filleted lionfish. We'll put them off to the side. I'm going to get this fillet and start skinning it. So once again, just put it on the edge of the table. Um, you can get really as close to the skin as you want with this because there's not, uh, there, there isn't any red meat on them whatsoever. So I'm doing that pulling, sawing motion. And I got really close to the skin and it is still super white. Delicious. <laughs> So these fish can live in anywhere from a couple feet of water to almost a thousand feet of water. They've been observed. So it's, uh, can't really have too much diver effort in there, but there's a, there's a pretty large commercial industry for them. Um, you can find them at some grocery stores, a lot of restaurants, and if your restaurant doesn't carry them, you can ask to carry line fish and try to put a little bit of a dent in that population and promote the consumption of them. So lionfish have, uh, they can mature within a year and males mature at about, uh, I believe four inches in length and females at seven inches in length. And uh, females can spawn um, every four days or so in very, in very warm waters since their range is uh, expanding and they could go up north. Uh, the reproduction can be a little bit different depending on where these lionfish are found but they can spawn up to 30,000 eggs at a time. 
And those eggs are in these two gelatinous masses that float around in the water for about 25 days or so. There you go. And the currants can take those eggs out. So these are our fillets, which look really great and tasty. And um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and prepare this fish whole. We'll take it over to um, the hose and I'll teach you a trick on descaling them because they actually do have scales. The scales come off pretty easy. You can use like a butter knife to take those off. You could use, you know, a, a scaling instrument for that. Uh, for scaling a fish, you know, you could leave the spines on, but I'd recommend taking the spines off because you can really go at it and if you poke yourself with that, you're going to have a bad time. So I have these nice stainless steel shears. I'm going to go ahead and cut off all the fins, even though it's just those dorsal, pelvic, and anal fins that have those venomous spines. So I'm going to cut towards the base and separate that fin from the body. There you go, it looks like a little wing. They're super pretty. And um, the Scorpionidae family, which these fish belong to, is very, they have a lot of species in there. There's up to 500 different kind of species in that Scorpionidae family. And there's about 10 species in the Taroist genus, so a different kind of lionfish. And then there's also a, another genus of dwarf lions called Dendrochiris. So there's a, a variety of species of fish, but really just the Taros miles and the Voltans, uh, mostly the Voltans get all that publicity. So here you go, I'm peeling off that, that skin sheath on there so you can see that spine. So it's super pointy. And uh, yeah, that's what you don't want to get poked by. <laughs> So even though this fin right here uh, oh, actually has that one venomous spine at the front, most of these are fin rays and there's that spine there. I'm going to go ahead and cut off all of them. And I'll go ahead and leave the caudal fin because that might be a good handhold for me as I uh, show you how to um, go ahead and um, scale them using the hose. Another thing I would like to do is uh, I'm gonna take out the gills if you're gonna be cooking them whole and I'm gonna be I'll also gut the fish. So these fish since they're invasive species and cause damage to both the environment and humans if you actually poke them um, they're not aggressive, they won't really chase you down or anything, but they use their spines as a defense. They have little known predators in the Gulf and the Atlantic, although I think some species of grouper, shark, barracuda have been documented in eating them, maybe even amberjack. But they're, uh, they're pretty big generalists, they eat both fish and invertebrates, and they've known to be eaten, they've, they've eaten up to 70 different kinds of uh, species out there, and probably a little, uh, probably even more. So I, uh, I put my knife tip in the vent, and I'm going to cut upward to take the guts out of the body cavity, because we do not want to eat those when we fry them. So I'm going to probably fry them, you can bake them. Um, a good tip once you scale them is cut little slits inside and put some seasoning. They are very, very tasty and really impressive in terms of a display if you want to wow somebody who hasn't eaten fish before or seafood. It's a really good uh, introductory fish because they don't taste like fish at all. Like I said, there's no season, there's no bag limit. You can take as much as you want. Um, and if you actually dive, you don't need a fishing license to harvest them with a spear, but you would need a fishing license to harvest them with hook and line because you can't specifically target lionfish. <laughs> You'd be catching other species as well. So let me go ahead and move the camera to the hose and we'll show you that. And uh, yep, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay guys, so here we have it. Here's our beautiful lionfish with our scales on and you're going to see what it looks like once we get those scales off using that hose. So you can use, like I said, a butter knife, a commercial kind of scaler. Um, if you do it with the spines on, which I don't recommend, 
Um, if you do happen to get stung by a lionfish, even if you're out there diving, um, I, uh, the, the best move of action is to put whatever body part you got stung in uh, hot water as you can stand, as hot of water as you can stand for 30 to 90 minutes, just depending on uh, how bad of a, a, a sting that is. And the reason for that is that the protein of the venom will actually denature and render it uh, not as effective. So let's go ahead and get our hose. And I learned this from some commercial spear fishermen, right? If your hose has a strong enough sort of jet setting, uh, you can go ahead and just shoot the scales right off. So that's what it looks like scaleless. So the majority of them are off. There might be a couple stragglers there, but you can get those with your hands. And let's just repeat on the other side. So scaleless, scaled. And that should be done. So that is a beautiful scaleless lionfish. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos. And please take that survey in the description. So let us know how we did. Thanks so much.